Day, April 11th. This is Jaguar's Happy Hour. Jaguar's Happy Hour is presented by the St. John's River Water Management District. And now, a guy who really wants you to listen to or watch Jaguar's Happy Hour. Jaguar's Happy Hour may contain nuts, cause football anxiety, draft anxiety, training camp anxiety, or the uncanny desire to kill a deer. Do not watch or listen to Jaguar's Happy Hour if you're allergic to Jaguar's Happy Hour. Only watch or listen to Jaguar's Happy Hour as directed. Jaguar's Happy Hour problem? Call 1-999-DTWD. J.P. Shatrick! Uh, it's an hour show. I, last I checked, well... Not much time left. Welcome in. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. It is Thursday, April 11th. Busy hour ahead as we close in on the NFL draft in a couple weeks. But the biggest news of the week, Josh Allen signing an extension with the Jaguars for big money. We'll break all that down coming up. The offseason program is up next. That's next week, Monday. Players officially report. We will keep it real as always. And, of course, the Microsoft questions. That were submitted on social media earlier today. That's all coming up. Jaguars Happy Hour brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving on 1010XL. Jaguars.com. Jaguars YouTube. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman from the Miller Electric Center in the Hyundai Studios. Good afternoon. Afternoon, J.P. How the heck are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. How long? Uh, what is it? Two weeks from the draft? Two weeks from today. Man, it's uh, it's coming that time in, of year. Coming in hot. That time of year. Masters is on TV right <laughs> now. Draft around the corner. It's a good time of year. There's a lot happening. Good it, time of year. It really is. OTAs are starting up. Uh, <laughs> that man, yes, yeah, fine. Soon. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, they'll be on the field doing things. Yeah, well, I at mean, some point for the players, it's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, it's a big deal. I mean, players come back in town. Yeah. Working out together. New defensive coaching staff. New scheme you know, to learn. There's a lot of that going on. Yep. I'm sure they'll tweak some of the offensive stuff as well, mm-hmm. but not as uh, – it's not going to be a complete overhaul of the system. Obviously, like the, the defensive side of the ball, that's going to be a lot of change. A lot of new personalities. And some of the same guys. Including a guy who just signed an extension. Five yeah. years. Reports of $141 million in change. $28.25 million annually. Josh Allen is coming back and uh, the number seven pick in the 2019 NFL draft. It's a massive amount of money, but he talked a lot yesterday about leaving a legacy. So last year, breaking the single season sack record um, wasn't because it was a contract year. Thankfully, it was a contract year, but if it was two, three years ago, I would have done it. You know what I mean? But it's just figuring everything out and uh, putting the pieces together, you know, building that confidence back up that I feel like I lost because I didn't live up to expectations that I know I could, you know. So it was investing in here, investing to your body a little bit more than what you usually do and being okay with the results that come with it. Um, So for me, it's to, all right, that worked for me. You know, I, let me do it again. <laughs> and so, you know, I found out what works for me. I found out my plan. I found out my schedule. And, uh, you know, again, I thank God every morning, every night, uh, and before I eat, uh, that I'm thankful. And I am a humble servant under him. And my kids will be, my wife is, and my whole family is. So that's Josh Allen yesterday, the full press conference on Jaguars.com. 17 and a half sacks in the contract year, of course, and now 10 sacks shy of tying Tony Brackens for the franchise record. Jeff Lagerman, hey, uh, produce at the right time, and he is here for a long time to come. But, and I'm excited and happy to have him just because he's their best pass rusher. And if you don't have the best pass rusher returning, then what do you do? It's it's like, okay, now we got to find somebody to replace him, and then now – we got to try to get better around everywhere else as well. It's not easy to do. So I'm glad he's back in the fold. Wish it had been done two years ago, which uh, I could have told you two years ago that uh, you want to keep this guy. And, but the production, but, the numbers might not have been there two years well, ago, right? I, you know, I, see, I don't, I don't look at Josh as that kind of a guy. Okay. I don't. And I, I look at Josh as a guy who's self-motivated that's always going to do his best no matter what no matter what, what the contract situation is or anything like that. So um, I was never – I would never be worried about Josh. 
Uh, I'm happy for him. It makes me wish I was 25 years old again. Uh, yeah, it makes you want to go stretch <laughs> a little bit, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you know, and the money is, you know, I think it puts him, what, in one of the top five defensive players in the National Football League right now. It's the third largest value contract of any current NFL defensive player. Yeah. That's it is big, large. It's big money. And, you know, he, he, he kind of rolled the dice a little bit. You know, he played last year and uh, and I don't want to say he bet on himself, whatever you want to call it, and and he did well. He he made the plays. He had a great year, and I still believe that Josh was a good player and was having great years and great games before that. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm happy for him. Happy he's back in the fold. He talked a lot yesterday about last year going into the season was the time he actually found the process that worked the best for him. Obviously, the results were there during the season, but. Um, going to Arizona on his own, missing right. a lot of the off-season program, and then just uh, getting right mentally and physically in the off-season set him up for success. So he found, like at least he said yesterday, he felt like he's probably found that formula that he's going to follow moving ahead. And that's a good thing. And I, I, I know he also talked about spending the first couple of weeks of OTAs here in Jacksonville so that he could learn the new defense, you know, learn – and meet these new coaches that are going to be on the defensive side of the ball. And that's smart. But I like that he's going to go back to Arizona where he was at. I mean, if it works for if it works for their guy, let him keep on doing it. And some coaches might be a little bit, I guess, resentful that a player would go and train elsewhere. But m most coaches that get it, if that's what's going to get the best out of the player, then by all means, go. <laughs> go do your thing. <laughs> But I, I will say this as a player, you take that a little added risk when you're working out some, somewhere else because if you're working under the MEC here, the Miller Electric Center, and then something happens to you and you get hurt, it's, it's treated a little bit differently than if you were somewhere else working out and had the exact same thing happen. So, But, uh, but that's good. I, I think that's a great plan by Josh. And I know Josh gave a, a lot of credit to his wife, as he should have, because here he is flying to Arizona uh, at the beginning of the week or on Sundays and then flying back home to be able to spend the weekend with the family. You know, he's committed. I mean, that commitment yeah. there is, is incredible. And, and he was very thankful to his wife, to, um, and she supported him through this whole process. And so uh, kudos to them, and I'm happy for Josh. And he's one of my favorites. You know, he's one of my favorites, and I, I love the guy, and I, I love everything about him. He's first class. He's a leader, and he's one of those guys that uh, you always want to end up keeping him around because he's just a – he's good for a locker room. He's good for the room. And he had to go the the scenic route in his career to, to get to this point. Remember, this is a long way from Abbeville, Alabama, when he was three years in high school there and then went back to New Jersey for his last year of high school. It was like a two- or three-star recruit, maybe a two-star recruit. Uh, didn't have any offers. He was going to go to, I think, to Monmouth. And then Kentucky got a whiff of him because they had a couple of decommitments and all of a sudden, hey, they had a connection somehow in New Jersey and got a look at his tape, and all of a sudden he's in Lexington, Kentucky, and – he was a wide receiver in those years in Alabama in high school too. I mean, that is quite a run from that point to now. It's amazing that if you go and you look at at the history of the league and some of the great players, a lot of the great players have something similar to that. And a lot of people say, well, does that make the player better? I think it does because they a lot of players that they're not these five-star athletes immediately – they feel like they have to do the extra work. So that player learns a little bit higher level of work ethic and commitment and doing the extra things because they're not a five-star recruit. They're a two-star guy. So I think those people are, are wired a little bit differently than compared to somebody who's five-star, has things come easy, you know, runs a 4-4 four -four in, in barefoot and, a, and, a, and a, you know, a barred pair of shorts or whatever. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah effortless you know those guys typically sometimes don't they don't have that work ethic and the commitment and so I mean Josh learned it and, and good for him man he's I don't know I don't know if I know a guy that's been with the Jaguars that's worked harder I mean the guy works his rear end off and is committed fully 
and fully bought in. And I know that Trent Baalke talked about him being a cornerstone piece. Absolutely he is. Those are the kind of players, again, you want to build your football team with. Whether you need air, electric, or plumbing service, Donovan is always a good call. And they've been trusted by customers for almost 40 years. Trust them to deliver fast, reliable service to your home. We're on 1010XL AM, Jaguars.com, Jaguars YouTube. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman. And now to the part about this new defense that's coming in. Ryan Nielsen, of course, is the defensive coordinator. You know, he's an edge player. We know that. But there mm-hmm. were moments late last year. Didn't he line up inside a little bit? Well, him and Trayvon both did. And could that be something moving forward, that maybe part of a package deal? How do you how do you line Josh Allen up now? Yeah, I, I don't see him getting moved inside on a regular basis. I, I think every now and again is a kind of a change of pace to keep the offense and the offensive line a little bit lighter on their feet because they're not sure what's going to happen because that's what happens when you move your typical edge rushers to the inside. Offensive line are like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And when I say lighter on their feet, I mean that. I mean lighter on their feet because they're not sure what's going to happen, a little bit indecisive. So, But I don't see that being a mainstay of this defense with Ryan Nielsen. But if all of a sudden you find another edge rusher in the draft, let's say you get Jared Verse in the, in the draft. Okay, Florida State, tremendous player. Uh, I'd rather have the guy from UCLA, by the way. Uh, Latu, is that how you say, pronounce oh, his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what you're talking about. He is JP. <laughs> Watching the film on that guy, oh, my God. I mean, I, I don't know if I would – I would probably take him – Latu, Latu, that's it. I would take yeah. him – like the first non-quarterback, hmm. I'd be taking that guy. Wow. He's that good. That good. But, I mean, if you had, let's say you added another edge rusher, okay, now you can maybe move Trayvon inside a little bit. He's a little bit better suited to that than than Josh. Hmm. Uh, I think Josh is more – and Josh is more comfortable on the right side. And so Josh on the right side, on the outside, Trayvon I think can do a little bit of both. I hmm. think he's got the size. Certainly got the strength to be able to kick down inside, so you wouldn't worry about him handling any kind of uh, power in those situations. Is Yasir Abdullah going to develop? That's I hope. Question. I mean, he didn't do much last year. You know, um, you know, he's he's an undersized guy, and I thought he, I thought he needed to be a little bit lighter and more maneuverable, and. Uh, just never, it never really clicked for him last year. So I'm hopeful this year. I still think he's got, a, he's got a tool set now. He's got some natural pass rush ability and reactions to it, and he's undersized. Doesn't have the length, and so typically, if if you're an undersized guy and you don't have the length, you've got to have something extra, something special, like Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis. I mean, those guys were not long; they were a little bit shorter by most standards. But Dwight Freeney had one of the best first steps in the league, yep. and Robert Mathis had a whole array of moves. Different level of guy, but Yannick Ngakwe was not the, the length guy either. I don't even know if if he's he's not even as long as Ngakwe, and he and Yannick was not a, a long guy. That's, what, that's my point. Yeah. Like Ngakwe was not that length player. No, he and was, he, he was kind of had a he had a really cool move, you yeah. know, that little chop move, which was his right. deal. So that was the extra thing for him, not at the the big level Hall of Fame, right? Level, and and he's right. yeah, he's not. He's not, not up there. Frank, I mean, it's, there's a Frank. reason why he's bounced around to a lot of different teams. That's right. But just using that as an example. Boy, did he really screw up. He got <laughs> offered a great contract here, turned it down, and then and, uh, hasn't been anywhere near collecting the level of pay that he would have gotten with that contract and over they've, here. And they've moved him. He's moved around a bunch of different teams in a short amount of time, too. Yeah, so. which is not a good sign. No. Especially for a guy that can rush the passer. If you're trading teams and you can rush the passer, what's going Something's on there? Something's happening. Something's not right. Hey, uh, two weeks until the draft. We're back in a moment. You've been digging into cornerback tape. That's a popular pick for the Jags. Well, and understandably so. But I think the the big question is, is there a fit at the top at that position? Mm. Well, maybe we're about to find out when we come back. I think we are going to find out here in in two weeks. Uh, Maybe in about two minutes. Maybe two weeks and two days. When you explain it to us after this timeout. I got, I got a, a few top guys to talk about. Well, I can't wait to hear them. Yeah, I got about five or six of them we can go. We, we can do it. Jaguars Happy Hour brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving.
What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Daly's Dash is not only your Jaguars game day stop, but a great place to grab a meal any day of the week. To honor the Jags and the fans, we've crafted the Duval Sub. The Duval comes with freshly sliced turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheese topped with crisp lettuce, fresh tomatoes, and a double portion of our secret sauce, all served on a fresh roll. Come by your local's Daily Dash today to get your delicious Duval Sub. Daily's is the official convenience store sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Get out and go to the spring sales event at your local Ford dealer. Don't miss low financing or big cash back on a large selection of Ford trucks or SUVs. Go start the job and finish it with a great deal on America's best-selling trucks, Ford F-150 and Super Duty. Or bring the whole crew and hit the road, go off-road, or take the back roads in a new Ford Bronco, Bronco Sport, or Explorer. All designed to keep you going. Get out and go to the spring sales event at your local Ford dealer today. Based on 1977 to 2023 CY total sales. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a whole lot more than just wings. Craving the ultimate game day experience? Look no further. Swing by Mr. Chubby's and indulge in the biggest and best wings in town, all while soaking up the lively atmosphere with fellow sports fans. With plenty of game day specials and locations on the west side, Fleming Island, Ponte Vedra Beach, and new this season, Everbank Stadium, they're here for all your game day needs. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Chubby's Wings, before the game, after the game, and during the game. Jags fans, the Everbank Draft Day experience is your chance to score a trip to the Motor City to witness the first round in person. One winner will win a trip for two to Detroit, including airfare, hotel, and tickets to the event on Thursday, April 25th. Enter now at everbank.com slash draft. No purchase necessary. Open a legal residence of the U.S. 18 and older. Enter from March 20th to April 12th, 2024. Visit everbank.com slash draft for official sweepstakes, rules, and other important details. Sponsor and administrator, Everbank N.A. Don't get sacked by a no-name propane rookie Jacksonville. Draft an all-star and switch to Amerigas, the official propane provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the homes and businesses who know it was always the Jags. Show off your Duval pride at your next tailgate with a Jaguars grill tank from Amerigas. To find an Amerigas exchange location near you or to order a propane fill-up for your home or business, visit Amerigas.com slash Jacksonville dash Jaguars or call 844-PRO-JAGS. I'm glad we got the deal done here before, you know, these, you know, these, these classes start or OTAs or mini camp or training camp mandatory. So, you know, I'm happy, you know, hopefully the organization's happy and the fan base is happy, but I know myself and my family's extremely happy and, you know, we're ready to move on. Josh Allen in a press conference yesterday here at the Miller Electric Center after signing his five-year extension worth uh, north of $140 million. Could be up to $150 million if he hits all the incentives. This Jaguars Happy Hour brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District, Florida's Water. It's worth saving. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman. The Jags have been nominated for a Webby Award in the sports video category for the 2023 schedule release video that came mm. out last year. Which so, was amazing. So we can't win without you, though. So go cast your vote now at WebbyAwards.com. W-E-B-B-Y Awards.com. Great stuff. WebbyAwards.com? Uh, yeah, WebbyAwards.com with two Bs. Web all together, it, yeah, and it's like a website. You okay. have to hit it. I, I, you, you I'm type a, it all in one thing and hit enter. All right. So when when you get there, then what do you do? You vote. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I just got to find it. Yes, it's in the sports video category. I will find it. I got the website up. I will uh, save it now. One of my browsers is open, so I can do that later. That's fantastic, Locks. Uh, the good technology stuff, is great for you. The, uh, the the schedule release video was awesome. Now, here's the question. <laughs> How do they top that? Is the Can question. you top that's it? tough, right? Can you top it? That's, <laughs> that's not easy. <laughs> Probably I think it, it can be done. 
Probably looking at like um, early May is usually when the schedule's been coming yeah, out lately. Yeah, yeah, it's after the draft sometime. A week or know? two after the draft. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'm looking forward to that. That's, for me, that's a highlight. Uh, the draft's the NFL, fun. Dude, dude, the NFL totally stole the idea yeah. and used what the Jaguars did to promote the schedule league-wide. They did. It was total thievery. It's fine. Did, did they call the Jaguars and say, hey, we really appreciate the yeah. idea that you guys had for your schedule release video because we used it for ours? Did anybody do that? Probably not. No. no. Did, I don't know. I don't I keep score of that could stuff. could have called, called them out and, and said, look, you, uh, you've you infringed on our copyrights. And we want Is it, it we copyright? Want, Is it copyright? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Can either. you even copyright that? I have no idea how the rules are on that. But it was, it was, it was total thievery. Thievery. Total thievery. Um, the, now, the, the star of the schedule release? He's a, a little bit of an actor. Yeah, anyway. Asher. Yeah, Asher. Asher's great, man. Um, he was all over the when it came out the other day. He was on like CBS this morning. They got, you know, shows are coming out, ghost shows and all this stuff. So he's all over the place talking about it. He was cool. texting me the other day because he, uh, he was talking to somebody about this uh, tequila that we, we were – Kind of was our lucky <laughs> bottle of tequila for the road two years ago. I, I, okay, <laughs> <laughs> he um, ended up having them. They ended up sending him a bunch of free bottles of tequila. Of I'm course, like, Asher. Did. I was like, "Where? Well, yeah. Wait a minute. Hey, Where's bottle. ours? Yeah, come you on. Know, you know the address to the stadium. That's right, Asher. All right. So, anyway. uh, the, but the the schedule release is kind of like when it gets real for me in the. Okay, you know. You can schedule out what yeah. you're going to do from August until hopefully February. You know, once the schedule. Just out. not in OTAs at all. You like to schedule release. Schedule release, and here we go. <laughs> Off and running. Uh, draft is coming up, yeah. of course, uh, two weeks away. And uh, week by week here, we're going through some position groups that could be in play for the mm -hmm. Jaguars. Mm -hmm. Well, last week, quarterback we went through, but that's not quite in play for the Jags. Cornerback, though, yeah. certainly could be. It's been mocked to the Jaguars a good bit, and we've kind of narrowed it down to a few you've watched on film. You've watched a bunch on film. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with Quinion Mitchell. Okay. Toledo. It's a well, name that's been mocked to the Jags a lot. What do you like? What do you not like? What have you seen? Real quick, before we get to Quinion Mitchell, the, the reason that we started with the quarterbacks, even though the Jaguars are not in the market for a quarterback, mm. is because that impacts the draft, especially if you're the Jaguars, which, you know, you're right in the middle of the first round. You've got a quarterback that you believe is a franchise guy. And so this opens up a lot of possibilities for the Jaguars because there could be four, five, maybe six quarterbacks picked ahead of them. Mm. So now that's pushing down a lot of top-tier talent down to the Jaguars. And they're going to have their pick of a number of guys. I think that they will have their choice of the best corner on the market. In my opinion, I think that's Quinion Mitchell. He, I think he's got uh, – the, the only question mark about the top two guys that I'm going to talk about is that neither one of them played a bunch of bump-and-run man coverage. And in the NFL, all defensive coordinators want to have somebody that plays bump-and-run so that they can play a style of defense that is uh, more beneficial to them, and that typically will include somebody that can play really good man. And Quenyon Mitchell and Cooper DeGene yep. – did I say that properly? You did. Yes, from Iowa. Yeah, neither one of these guys, which these are my top two corners, neither one of these guys have played a ton of man. Both of these guys, especially Quinion Mitchell, he plays a lot of off coverage, three deep coverage. But, man, he's got great reaction time. He's got great speed, um, very good physical tackler. Though he checks a lot of the boxes. Again, you're always trying to – forecast or predict or project an athlete that's playing at the college level to what he can be in the NFL. And so there's a little bit of projection involved, I think, with both of these guys because they didn't do what you'd like to have a top cornerback do, which is play bump and run. But I love Quinion Mitchell, JP. He's my best corner on, on the board, in my opinion. Uh, DeGene and then uh... – DeGene, super good tackler. I mean, super good tackler, great ball skills. I mean, if the ball's in the air, he turns into a wide receiver, and it's very natural. Uh, the the way sometimes, you know, the head turns, some guys get lost. He doesn't get lost. He becomes uh, not only a receiver, but also still has the ability to 
remain a defender. So, in other words, if he can't catch it, he's got the awareness to break the ball up. And he's got a lot of size, just uh, similar to Quinion Mitchell, probably a little bit bigger than Quin- Quinion Mitchell. But, again, he's played a lot of zone at Iowa. But uh, super great tackler, physical player, aware player, great ball skills. I think he's got uh, he's got a lot of upside. And then another that you wanted to touch on today from Alabama, Kool Aid McKinstry. Love the name Kool Aid. I'm drinking the Kool Aid on this uh, one, man. You like this one? I like him um, because you know Alabama's got another guy and uh, Terry and Arnold. Yep. Is that did I say that right? The opposite corner. And yep. so you have one and three. Okay, Terry and Arnold is number three. And Kool Aid is number one, and so you when you watch Alabama, you you got to pay attention to both of them as well as Dallas Turner and everybody else because you're watching a ton of guys who you're sitting there rewinding the film ten times because you want to watch everybody on that defense that's a draftable player. But uh, I I really believe that Kool Aid's the better of the two. There are some prognosticators that believe that uh, Terry and Arnold is the higher rated one. Not in my book. Why so? Because Kool-Aid plays man, and he is right there. So if, if you're the wide receiver, he is right there in the hip pocket of the wide receiver everywhere he goes. He's got a very, very strong ability to do that. So if you're looking for a guy that's going to play man, he's uh, he's not super big, uh, but he's got, uh, I think, decent size. I, I like him. I think he could play some some great football for a team that's asking asking their corners to play man. I think he's got that talent. Well, the Jaguars in their history have drafted three first-round cornerbacks. Fernando Bryant, 1999. Two five. Two five. That's of, Fernando Bryant. Out of Alabama. 2016, Jalen Ramsey, of course, out of Florida State. 2020, C.J. Henderson out of Florida. That was a terrible draft pick. So, Henderson didn't last. Ramsey didn't finish his deal here either. He got traded. The uh, whole thing with with drafting the guy from Florida, what's the name? C.J. Henderson. C.J. Henderson. Yeah. I mean, you remember after he was drafted, it was almost looked like he was not happy. The reaction, the shot the reaction was terrible. Told the tale. It just it it started bad and it ended bad, and it, and, and in between it was not good. No, it was far from it. It was, just, it was just not not a good pick. So the Jags, at least historically, have I don't know how was Bryant. Bryant's pretty good. Fernando Brown's a good player. Yeah, good player. Yeah, yeah, two five, two five's a good player now. Yeah, and, and Ramsey uh, was a good player. Jalen's a great player. Yeah. Great player. I mean, just, you know, the personality of Jalen didn't work here, and it was better for him to go to other places, I guess. But um, excellent player. And what I loved about Jalen is Jalen, when he wants to be, he's so physical. Yes. So physical. And uh, superior talent. You know, there, there are certain guys that play the game that they just have superior talent. Jalen Ramsey is like one of those guys at corner. The, uh, the safety uh, – uh, for the Chargers, uh, James, you know, uh, Florida State guy. Gosh, Derwin James. Der- yeah, Derwin right. James is like a like freak, freak athletic, super strong, super fast. I mean, Derwin James, Jalen Ramsey. I mean, these are guys that just they're physical freaks, and they don't come along very often. They just have superior ability, and uh, and they're fun to watch play. But you got to hit. You got to hit this first round. If you're going cornerback, you got to have a guy that can last. The percentages uh, of the of the of hitting in the first round need to be very high for any football team. And if they're not, then you need to look at who's picking them. Give me another couple names that could be in that mix of these three we talked about here. Terry and Arnold is one of them, right? Possibly. I, well, I, I mean, I think as far as like corners, yeah. Well, I mean, if you look, Wiggins, Nate Wiggins from Clemson's mm-hmm. a guy that plays a little bit of of man. He's got some size. Uh, not real big fan of of his uh, physical presence, tackling ability. I think it's a little bit weak at times, but he's somewhere up in that range. Um, but I really believe JP that you got to be looking at, at those top corners if the Jaguars use that pick in the first round, because I think that they will have their choice of any corner when it comes to pick 17. If not, then it'll be the second best corner. The Jags are celebrating their 30th season and the time to get your 2024 season ticket membership. Well, logs, it's right now. Be at the bank for every touchdown and secure your seats at jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000. 
We'll return and keep it real. I'm voting right now, by the way. The Webby Award voting. I am. Yeah. I am on that right now, and I am going to vote for the Jaguar schedule release. The Jaguars, thank you. Uh, keeping it real. Expectations for Josh Allen when we return. It's Jaguars Happy Hour brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move in ready homes and step up your game. As the official supermarket of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Publix is helping fans gear up for game day with the limited time Jaguar sub. Piled high with hot deli chicken tenders, boar's head bacon, cheddar cheese, coleslaw, and barbecue mayonnaise on a white sub roll. The Jaguar sub is an easy, delicious meal for any fan. Make it an ultimate game day by ordering the Jaguar sub online for in-store pickup. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. And we have some great news. Fields has a vehicle you want in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to FieldsAuto.com. Don't make a bad call when it comes to servicing your home. Cooling off with a baby pool in the house to fix your air conditioning problem is a bad call. Trying to catch a wave in a flooded bathroom is a bad call. Using a burning electrical panel to make s'mores is a bad call. The next time something goes wrong, make a good call to Donovan. Whether you need air, electric, or plumbing service, Donovan is always a good call. It's why we've been trusted by our customers for almost 40 years and why you can trust us to deliver fast, reliable service to your home. Donovan, always a good call. Visit DonovanAC.com today. Jags fans, the Everbank Draft Day Experience is your chance to score a trip to the Motor City to witness the first round in person. One winner will win a trip for two to Detroit, including airfare, hotel, and tickets to the event on Thursday, April 25th. Enter now at everbank.com slash draft. No purchase necessary. Open a legal residence of the U.S. 18 and older. Enter from March 20th to April 12th, 2024. Visit everbank.com slash draft for official sweepstakes, rules, and other important details. Sponsor and administrator, Everbank N.A. but it's about 10, 20 years from when he starts to understand and develop. Oh, daddy, you was, you had me here? Or I was there when you did this. And then we can look back, we can look back at the videos and the pictures and, and just, you know, gain those memories back and see how happy we were at that time. Um, so that's what, that's what's special for me. And again, it's to create my legacy and to leave a legacy wherever I go, and they're part of it, and they're always going to be a part of it. Josh Allen discussing family with Kai Stevens. The one-on-one conversation available at Jaguars.com and Jags YouTube. Jaguars Happy Hour continues, brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving. Well, the draft is almost here two weeks away. The Jags will be on the clock at number 17, unless they're not. They could move back. They could move up. They could just stay there. There's plenty of options. Either way, there's a party at the bank mm. on Thursday, April 25th. The official Duval draft party presented by Donovan Air Electric and Plumbing. We're getting the party started at 7 o'clock. Tickets are free. Register today. Jaguars.com slash draft party. And there will be a draft radio show that uh, starts from the stadium. 
on uh, Thursday the 25th as well. Uh, so a lot going on, as always, on draft night. Excited and looking forward to it. The NFL does a great job of making the draft a production. <laughs> it certainly is a production. Uh, in Detroit that. this year, correct? It is. Yeah. Downtown Motor Detroit. City. Motor City will have a have a have a good show, I'm sure. Yes, they will. They'll they'll do a good job, but uh I really enjoy the first round. I really do. I, I watch enough guys on film to get around around probably three rounds deep total, you know, because I'm watching about five or six guys at each position, so that, that adds up pretty quick. But um but I like to see what other people think. You know, once once the draft happens, you kinda compare that what happens to what you kind of had a mental picture of to see you know, was I kind of thinking the right thing or you know what are these do these guys know what the heck they're doing you know kind of a thing uh, but the great thing about the draft again it's it's projecting and so it's there's no exact science to it whatsoever in fact uh, some people might have a great knack of it uh, and for it that have no experience of working for an NFL team because some be, some people can can see the traits, some people can see the production and can kind of put it together. I wonder when AI or if AI mm. will ever have a role. It's got to have a role at some point in analyzing talent, college talent for the NFL. Don't you think that it'll that always would be happen? able to do statistically some of that? I would guess, but you can't. A computer can't uh, measure JP, heart. Uh, can't no, measure heart. No, but a computer can measure speed and well, reaction and and mm -hmm. all of those things. Because I mean, nowadays they have players wearing these monitors. Now they're everywhere. And uh, I mean, so what information is not out there? I don't know. But I mean, there's a lot of information that that AI could use to help spit out. You know, the the AI top prospect list or something i don't know it's going to be a, interesting i mean ai is having such a huge impact in so many other areas of our life today uh, why not looking at nfl prospects why not yeah why not we're on 1010 xlam jaguars.com jaguars youtube jp shadrick with jeff Lagerman. and as we always do on this program we keep it real Pretty much all the time. Well, certainly in this segment, because it's called Keeping It Real. Okay. The topic today, how will Josh Allen handle the expectations that come with this size of a contract? That's a challenge. I think he'll handle it very well. Uh, again, I said this earlier. Josh Allen is the type of quality of person and athlete that you want to make sure that you get on that second contract. I'm glad they got it done with him. I don't worry about a guy like Josh Allen. I mean, there are some guys that you always worry about. Okay, he's got the money. Now he's not going to end up having the ethic, uh, the work ethic, and the commitment to it. That's why you got to be careful with who you give the big money to because some guys aren't wired to handle the big money. It has an impact on them in different ways. One, it makes them a little bit less. Some, some guys, it could make them lazy. Hey, look, you know, I've got my guaranteed money now. I broke the bank, generational money, I'm good. Uh, and some guys, it, it doesn't impact them at all because they're an ultimate competitor. And at the end of the day, it's not about the money with them. It's about playing the game at a high level. And I always, I always like what Josh says because he talks about leaving a legacy. Okay, legacy doesn't have anything to do with money. Okay, when he's talking about legacy, he's talking about performance and playing extremely well and setting a standard for himself. And that's the kind of guy that you want to be able to give that type of contract to because you know that he's going to re react and be responsible and act accordingly. You know how people are. You know how fans are and should be because fans need to be uh, super into their football team. Mm -hmm. Is there a statistical number – that he needs to reach to call this successful, or does that matter to you? Well, I mean, yeah, I think there's always numbers that you want to attain. And because, you know, look, everybody measures a pass rusher by sacks. And what was it, 17 this past 17 year? 17 and a half, yeah. And so everybody's going to expect 17, 17 and a half. I'm not going to expect 17 and a half, but I'm going to expect double digits. I mean, I think that that's the minimum. Uh, 
bar that he needs to surpass. And a lot of it depends on the circumstances. There are a lot of guys that don't get 20 sacks or 17 sacks, but have a huge impact on quarterbacks and the passer. Mm -hmm. So what's that impact? Uh, you know, sometimes it's not always measurable in sacks or pressures. So, but, um, but I think, you know, double digits, if you're in double digits, man, you're, you're an elite pass rusher. I mean, it's a simple fact. If you're a double digit sack guy, you are an elite pass rusher in the national football league. If you do it year in and year out, that's the challenge. So, year in and year out. So 10 is your number. That's why TJ Watt is, okay. is up here. Yeah. You know, that's why Aaron Donald essentially anointed TJ Watt. Now he's the best defender in the national football league. And Aaron Donald talked about a couple of things when he talked about TJ Watt and he was spot on consistency stays on the field all the time, plays running the pass equally well. I mean, those are all the things that, that Josh Allen also does. But the challenge with Josh now is to do it again at that kind of a high level because T.J. Watt's been, been stacking them, stacking them, and stacking them, and it's hard to do it at that level. T.J. better than Chris Jones? Chiefs? It's a great, it's a great conversation. I don't know if he's better – um, different different position. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. Every time T.J. Watt lines up, um, if the play is, is anywhere in his neighborhood, he is always very active. Sometimes Chris Jones can shut it down a little bit. Oh boy, he can turn it on when but he when needs he to. But when he turns it on, <laughs> oh, yeah. he's we unbelievable. saw that first end. He's unbelievable. Yeah. And the, I think – the challenge for Chris is to be able to have more consistency play in and play out for himself. But when he rolls, you're not going to stop him. You're not going to stop him. But for Josh, the challenge is consistency. Yeah, to get to that point, you have to do it year over year yeah, over look, year. Look, Josh had a, a good year two years ago, but not quite the level that you know that you wanted to see out of Josh. And he was banged up a little bit, had yeah. a little bit of a shoulder. Uh, the year, first year as a rookie, really good year. You know, so it, it's just trying to be consistent and have that productivity at a high level consistently. It's hard to do, especially if you're if you got a if you're dinged up. You know, you're not feeling 100. percent You know, I mean that's a that's a big part of it. That was keeping it real. I thought we did that today. I think we. You certainly did your part. Trying to keep it real, JP. You always do. We appreciate it. You know the uh, um, to be keep keeping it real. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it real here. Okay. There's some offensive linemen this this team could really really use in the draft. Really? Yeah. So a lot you of people. Go another position group. I, I would not be surprised if the Jaguars go offensive line at 17. Not one bit surprised. I would not be a bit surprised if they go defensive tackle. If if Latu's available at seventeen, which he's not going to be, if he were, mm -hmm. and you don't pick him, somebody needs to get fired. I mean, <laughs> the the offensive line thing. Considering the players that they I would, have on that line, there's some veteran players on that line that may not be around here for the long haul. I would consider trying to trade up in this draft to get Latu. Should we trade up? If if. If there, was, up. if there was a if there was a reasonable hmm. level, you know, when I say reasonable, you know, I, you're, you're not going to get in the top five, you know, and I don't know if he would go in the top five, but let's say that he's sitting there at ten, and can you get to ten from seventeen to ten to get well, a guy I'm like sure that? Sure, you can, but. Uh, it might cost you more than you're willing he's, to give up. And at some point, you need some good. cheap labor. You know, I mean, you're starting to pay all this money out. You're going to need some rookie players on your team. Draft picks. What do you mean pay all the money out? You, know, you just paid Josh Allen, the quarterback at hey, some look, point's if, coming up. If you, like, if you, if you, you just paid a boatload of money to offensive line. I don't free care agency. if I'm paying a guy like Latu in, in this draft. 
I'm okay with that. Well, I'm talking about that's yeah, but you need more than just the first round guy. You need like the second and third and fourth yeah, round no, yeah, players yeah, yeah. to fill your roster out. Yeah, so you're not paying everybody. Like, what are we doing? That's what if you draft well, that's what allows you to manage your salary cap because yeah. your roster is full of guys that are essentially fixed income. If you put it all in the first round guy, then you don't have anybody else that are rookies. Well, in theory. Not, well, I mean. But I'm just saying, though, if Lat- if Latu was available, <laughs> let's say at anyway. ten, <laughs> you're going. Go get him. All in. Go get him. I We're love him. In. I love him. I, you know, and I mean, you know, you know me. I don't I don't watch college football during the fall because I watch so much NFL. I just I'm, I'm burnt. I, you know, I can't watch that much football. There's not enough time in the day, mm-hmm. and and so for me, you got to take a mental break. So I don't watch a whole lot of college football. But watching Latu, he's I don't know if he's blockable. And watching him against some of the uh, higher-rated tackles in the draft, he's wearing them out, wearing them out. Hmm. They can't block him. He lines up inside, outside. Uh, Verse is another one who's really good, by the way. Hmm. The Florida State guy, Mm -hmm. he's really good. The guy at Alabama, uh, eh, Dallas Turner, I mm-hmm. believe his name mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Where's Worth number 15, 15 at yeah, Alabama? That's him. Um, I like him, but I don't like him at 17. But verse, mm, Latu, oh, yeah. Well, you're, tra- you're going all in for Latu. <laughs> I love the guy. GM Jeff Lagerman is going all I, I'm in. I'm just telling you, JP, it's not – I mean, it's just you don't <laughs> see a guy like this come along very often. He's just – He's rare. I don't want to use that term that we used last week. <laughs> it starts with a G. Yeah, I want to pass. Ends with an iteration. Pass on that, on the use of that word. Uh, we're back in just a moment. Social media questions, Microsoft questions. In fact, when we return, it's Jaguars Happy Hour, brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Jags fans, the Everbank Draft Day experience is your chance to score a trip to the Motor City to witness the first round in person. One winner will win a trip for two to Detroit, including airfare, hotel, and tickets to the event on Thursday, April 25th. Enter now at everbank.com slash draft. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of the U.S. 18 and older. Enter from March 20th to April 12th, 2024. Visit everbank.com slash draft for official sweepstakes, rules, and other important details. Sponsor and administrator, Everbank N.A. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. Don't get sacked by a no-name propane rookie Jacksonville. Draft an all-star and switch to Amerigas, the official propane provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the homes and businesses who know it was always the Jags. Show off your Duval pride at your next tailgate with a Jaguars grill tank from Amerigas. To find an Amerigas exchange location near you or to order a propane fill-up for your home or business, visit Amerigas.com slash Jacksonville dash Jaguars or call 844-PRO-JAGS. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. 
Get out and go to the spring sales event at your local Ford dealer. Don't miss low financing or big cash back on a large selection of Ford trucks or SUVs. Go start the job and finish it with a great deal on America's best-selling trucks, Ford F-150 and Super Duty. Or bring the whole crew and hit the road, go off-road, or take the back roads in a new Ford Bronco, Bronco Sport, or Explorer. All designed to keep you going. Get out and go to the spring sales event at your local Ford dealer today. Based on 1977 to 2023 CY total sales. Everybody's competing for the AFC South. And, you know, I, I still believe we're top dogs. And, you know, and I'm going to believe that. And, you know, the best de- in my mind, the best defensive front is going to win these games. And I feel like we have a great opportunity to be the best defensive front in our division, which is going to lead us on to bigger and better things. So, you know, I'm excited to get the word. I'm excited to be around the guys again and uh, know that this part is done and over with. Um, and now is to how can we how can we win a Super Bowl? Josh Allen in his press conference yesterday, the full archive on Jaguars.com and Jaguars YouTube. Jaguars Happy Hour brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water. It's worth saving. JP Shadrick with Jeff Logaman. We're on 1010XL AM, Jaguars.com, Jaguars YouTube, winding down for the day. And Time now for social media questions powered by Microsoft. Nice. We put out the cat signal earlier today. Mm-hmm. How many we got today? Well, here are the three best that we've come up with. Three. Bring it on. Answer. Question number one at Van Diver 21. By the end of his extension, will Josh Allen be viewed as the best Jags defensive player ever? I hope so. <laughs> it's not a yes or no. Come on. <laughs> Well, I mean, look, uh, I don't think that can be a, a yes or no answer. I mean, it's, I hope so. I mean, you hope that he stays healthy. You hope that he you know, continues to get better, which I believe he will. But health is a big thing. And so there's no way to predict good health. Knocking on wood that it st- he stays healthy. But if he stays healthy, I believe that Josh Allen – will be considered arguably one of the best Jaguar defenders in history. If he goes to three Pro Bowls in the next five years. Well, that's a great argument. I mean, who who else is up there? Who else who, who else has five Pro Bowls in their time on defense I don't for think, the Jags? I don't think there has Nobody. been one ever. No. And who has the most Pro Bowls in the Jaguars' history on defense? Mm. That's an interesting Donovan, question. Donovan go a couple times? I don't think he did because, you know, Donovan was kind of a tackler. Brackens didn't go, did he? I don't think Brack went, you know. I want to say Jalen went a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, he went certainly, yeah, once. Yeah, At least once. once or twice. I mean, it, that's a great question. That might be a good trivia question. He might already be tied for the most at two. Um, but yeah, Calais. Mean, Calais. Was here only you know, three you th- years. You think of the best Jaguar Defenders in history, Rasheen Mathis. Oh, Rasheen is in that conversation. Tony Brackens, Calais for a short period of time. Obviously, Daryl Smith I would put up there. But they weren't They weren't defender. getting the NFL accolades no, that come and, with that. Though, I, don't, I try not to use that as a measuring stick because Jacksonville is a smaller market, doesn't get the, the national exposure. So you, know, you, you can't compare Pro Bowls with a guy that's played in Jacksonville versus a guy that maybe has played in New York. Okay. It's very it's very different. And that's why I think if you're an agent, I think I'd be less likely or you'd want to be less likely to tie that type of recognition to incentives. You would like to have it maybe uh, in in another way uh reach a, a reachable incentive instead of pro bowls because it you know this is a small market. You know, the team hasn't been great, the exposure hasn't been high, and you need exposure. And you need to be a good football team to gain those type of accolades. Next question at JFix88. Which is more likely to happen? The Jaguars trade up in the draft to get a top receiver, or they trade for a top veteran receiver such as Higgins, Ayuk, etc. I don't, I don't know if they necessarily have to trade up, but I think I think a wide receiver in, in the draft is definitely going to happen. And I think it's going to happen fairly high, whether it be in round one or round two. I think that there could be a wide receiver taken. I don't think that they're going to trade up. I don't think this is a draft that you want to trade up. 
You he know just I mean? said you would give the bank for a lot. That's the only guy. That's it. Huh? That's the only guy I would do it for. Hmm. Unless I was in need of a quarterback, then obviously I would. Then that's different, right? I would give up a ton to get a Caleb Williams or a Drake May or whatever, or right. you know, one of those guys. But I haven't watched anybody that I'd sit there and say, yeah, you know what? I'm willing to give up a lot. Now those, the two top wide receivers, which um, Marvin Harrison jr. Is really good. But you know, the, the one guy that I really like is Malik neighbors. He's special. I, there's a lot of teams that think that and people think that, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a slam dunk first wide receiver pick overall. I don't know about that. He's, he's good. I think there's Logs, a – He's really good. I know. He, I know. But, I mean, look, he's neighbors really good. pretty good. Yeah, he's really good too. <laughs> but you turn on the film and what that what that guy does, I mean, he just gets great separation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think the name also brings a little bit more attention to Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, as it should. He's really good, though. I know. I, I'm Ooh, not saying he's, he's not. Really good. I'm just saying is that Malik Neighbors is really good, too. Yeah. Really good. You know? So, I, I don't know. It's, it's a great debate. We'll find out in about four or five years, maybe. Uh, at Dantony Wilk is our final question today. Jeff, if you had to guess, what is the first down starting lineup on the defensive line? Is Armstead going to play three technique on first and second down? Yes. Okay. And now what's the starting lineup on first down? Uh, you know, if you're playing a four down, which I think they're going to play some four down this year. Trayvon at left end. Devon Hamilton at nose. Eric Armstead at three. Josh at the uh, right defensive end. And then your two linebackers, which uh Boye and uh, Devin. And then the corners with Tyson, uh, Antonio Johnson will be at one safety with uh, Cisco. Cisco at the other one, and then the other corner. You know, we'll see what happens may in the not, draft. May not be on the roster yet. May not be. And the nickel will be one of the guys they signed in free agency, most likely. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe. unless somebody develops, um, you might get somebody in the draft too. You never know. Look, and here's the reality too: Antonio Johnson can play safety. And he can play nickel. Yeah, right. So, yeah. I mean, great positional flexibility with him. Uh, very similar to Hamilton, Cal, Kyle Hamilton in Baltimore. He's got a similar skill set. That's saying something. Kyle Hamilton can play. I know he can play. Uh, I think That's Antonio Johnson can play too. And, it, I mean, it, Hamilton is like everywhere. My all hope. The time. What, what round was he? I don't know. Fifth? Something ridiculous. Okay, because we had this discussion about who was the best late round pick in Jaguars history and Telvin Smith's name popped out of my, yeah. into my mind. And no, 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 Kyle Hamilton was the first round pick. You talking about no, Antonio I, Johnson? Yeah, I'm talking about Antonio Johnson. I knew Kyle Hamilton was the first round pick. Come on, JP. First <laughs> just, round pick of like, Baltimore what are you Ravens. About? That's what I thought. Many people thought he should be the first overall pick of the draft. Antonio Johnson, fifth round pick. Okay. Yeah. We had this discussion. I think it was last week, wasn't it? About it the, was. Okay. And I'm mistaken. I should have. I should have said. And I believe this. I believe Antonio Johnson will go down as one of the best late round picks the Jaguars have ever had. Write it down. But you got to go play. No, I know you got to go play. But I'm just telling you, he's, he was hurt. Remember, he he hurt his hamstring. Had a hamstring early, early in camp, and then he he ended up missing the first you know probably month of the season, and yep. they slowly worked him back in. Yeah. But I'm just telling you what I'm seeing, and, and I'm seeing a guy that's got uh, – he's got a tremendous skill set, and I think he's going to have a huge impact with his football team, and, and I think he's going to end up being one of the best late-round picks in Jaguars history. There you have it. The social media questions powered by Microsoft are in for the day, and that will about do it for our show. Congrats again to Josh Allen signing his extension, five-year deal, boatload of money. So is he going to buy his dinner now? I hope so. One he, night? He's always welcome in the studio. Let's put it that way. And he, he will pop by on occasion. Um, and two weeks away from the NFL draft. We'll have another show again next week, and then all of a sudden we'll be counting down the days. And we have a draft show. And then that's coming up. We're going to be weeks. live during the draft. We'll do this show from the draft at normal time, and then Correct. you guys will have the draft show after that. And uh, you're doing social media. Uh, I have Jaguars. no idea. You don't know? Okay. A lot of stuff. You'll probably jump on with us at some point. I'm going to guess so. Yeah. I might just walk over there. Jumping is dangerous. We'll be uh, we'll be in the TV studio, of the or should I say the national broadcast booth at the stadium. That's exciting. We're going to have a great view of all the the action. 
That's Jeff Lagerman. I'm J.P. Shadrick. Our thanks to Joe Fortunato, David Cho, Brent Reber, and thanks to you for listening and watching Shagwars Happy Hour, presented by the St. John's River Water Management District.